Alex. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to worship. It's time to begin. Thank you so much for being here. Um, a couple of announcements you need to know about. Uh, this afternoon at 5 o'clock is Sunday Gun Day. Uh, bring your favorite firearm and meet at Mr. Seth's house. The address is on the uh, right there on the screen. It's also on the graphic. Mr. Alex, will you stop the music for us, please? Thank you so much. Uh, 6629 William R. King Road. Um, bring a two, There's a sign-up sheet if you haven't signed up yet. If you don't know what to bring, bring a two-liter. Um, we're going to have a devotion with Mr. Melvin, and then we're going to eat hot dogs together, and then we're going to target practice until you're tired. Um, it's just a men's get-together fellowship for us to spend some time together, and we look forward to seeing all of you there, Who and you're welcome. To, ladies have asked. Yes, you may come as well. We want you to be there as well. And don't forget now, um, on October 15th, October 15th, the Children's Home is coming. Falcon Children's Home is coming to minister on that day, and we're going to have a pig cooked by Mr. Roger afterwards. Alex, the music is still playing. Could you check that for me? Thank you so much. Um, we're having a pig picking right after church with Mr. Roger on the pig, but we need you to sign up to bring a side. And if you've not had Mr. Roger's barbecue, you will certainly enjoy yourself. But come on October 15th. We're also collecting supplies for the children's home. We do that all throughout the last two or three months um, as we take that for a special event that they have there to help the children's home. And don't forget the first Wednesday in October. The first Wednesday in October starts the Teens Financial Stewardship Class with Mr. Melvin, who's been in the mortgage industry over 30 years. We're going to record him for later viewing on YouTube as well. But get your young people, get your uh, adults. So you won't, you're not going to hurt my feelings if you say, Ken, I'd rather hear Melvin, um, which the truth of the matter is I'd rather hear Melvin than hear myself. Um, but if y'all want to come over and learn something, you, most of you know I preach and teach on stewardship in November on Sunday mornings, but the youth will be practicing for Christmas in November. So we're going to um, have them, Mr. Melvin, teach them on Wednesday night starting in October. Last but not least, Trunk or Treat is getting big. Trunk or Treat's on the way. Um, if you could, you get $25 per family to help us buy candy in bulk or whatever amount you can give, which is going to be our biggest outreach of the year. Someone has donated a uh, cotton candy machine. So right now we're going to have popcorn and cotton candy and candy. And uh, normally if you sign up, we'll have a sign-up sheet for the trunks very, very soon for you to come out and help us show our community that we care about them and do an outreach to give their children a safe and fun place to come on the weekend of Halloween, October 29th. Let's stand and open our worship services this morning, please, with Days of Elijah. These are the days of Elijah, declaring the word of the Lord. And these are the days of your servant Moses, righteousness being restored. And these, these are days of great trials, of famine and darkness and sword. Still we are the voice in the desert crying, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Behold, he comes riding on the clouds. Shining like the sun at the trumpet call, lift your voice. It's the year of Jubilee, and out of Zion's hill, salvation comes. And these are the days of Ezekiel, the dry bones becoming as flesh. And these are the days of your servant David rebuilding a temple of praise. And these are the days of the harvest. The fields are as wide in the world. And these are the laborers in your vineyard declaring the word of the Lord. Behold, he comes. Riding on the clouds, shining like the sun, at the trumpet call, lift your voice. It's the year of Jubilee, and out of Zion's hill, salvation comes. There's no God like Jehovah, 
There's no God like Jehovah. 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 Behold, He comes riding on the clouds, shining like the sun. At the trumpet's call, lift your voice. It's the year of Jubilee, and out of Zion's hill, salvation come. There's no God like Jehovah. 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 Behold, He comes riding on the clouds, shining like the sun. At the trumpet's call, lift your voice. It's the year of Jubilee, and out of Zion's hill, salvation comes. Behold, He comes. Riding on the clouds, shining like the sun. At the trumpet's call, lift your voice. It's a year of jubilee, and out of Zion's hill, salvation comes. Open your mouth and praise Him with me. Father, in Jesus' name, come, Lord Jesus, come quickly. We thank you, Father, for salvation, full and free, and Lord, that you're coming again riding on the clouds and we'll see you and we'll hear the great trumpet of God sound and we who are alive and remain will be called up to be forever and ever and those that are dead will burst from their graves and Father we will be saved from this old world and live with you in eternity forever thank you God for saving me from my sins delivering me from myself and helping me and guiding me and using me for your glory your honor and your praise in the authority of the name of Jesus amen and amen cross out shake hand hug next make people feel welcome as we continue worshiping this morning. And these are the days of Ezekiel, the dry bones becoming as flesh. And these are the days of your servant David, rebuilding a temple of praise. And these are the days of the harvest, the fields are as wide in the world, and we are the laborers in your vineyard, declaring the word of the Lord. Behold, he comes, riding on the clouds, shining like the sun. At the trumpet's call, lift your voice. It's a year of jubilee. Comes. Alex, there's no God like Jehovah. 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 Behold, He comes riding on the clouds, shining like the sun. At the trumpet's call, lift your voice. It's a year of jubilee, and out of Zion's hill, salvation comes. Behold, He comes, riding on the clouds, shining like the sun. 
at the trumpet's call. Lift your voice, it's the year of Jubilee. And out of Zion's hill, salvation comes. Amen. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight. Visions of rapture now burst on my sight. Angels descending, bring from above. Echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I am my Savior, am happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above. Filled with His goodness, lost in His love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. You may be seated. As our ushers come to serve us, I want to thank you for giving of his tithes and your offerings. Uh, because of your faithfulness, we were able to, if you drove by and noticed a great big old crane in the parking lot, we had to fix the steeple. Uh, it's not very glamorous, but it has to be done so the roof doesn't leak. Uh, we thank you for giving above his tithes and your offerings towards all the things that you'd give. Operation Christmas Child, Trunk or Treat. When you bring items for Falcon's Children's Home, it all makes a difference. And we don't want you to think that your sacrifice is taken for granted. So thank you so much for when you give and worship of his tithes and your offerings over and above that. So let's just take our tithes and offerings in our hands and use our offering pledge together that we also use as an offering prayer. I sow my finances into the kingdom of God. Every penny is producing for God and for me. The gospel is preached. Bodies are healed. Lives are changed. Satan is defeated, God is exalted, and Jesus is Lord. I give, and it shall be given back to me. Pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall God give back to me through the hands of men that I may have to give again. All of my needs are met, 
and the needs of the Goshen New Life Church, according to his riches and glory, by Christ Jesus, amen. And smile because God loves a cheerful giver. Stand with us. Let's worship in songs we worship in giving. A song called Chain Breaker. If you've been walking the same old road for miles and miles, if you've been hearing the same old voice tell the same old lies, if you're trusting to fill the same old holes inside, there's a better life. There's a better life. If you got pain, if you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom or saving, he's a prison shaking savior. If you got chains, he's a chain breaker. We've all searched for the light of day in the dead of night. We've all found ourselves worn out from the same old fight. We've all run to things we know just ain't right. When there's a better life, there's a better life. If you got change, he's a pain. If you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom or saving, he's a prison shaking savior. If you got chains, he's a chain breaker. If you believe it, if you receive it, if you can feel it, somebody testify. If you believe it, if you receive it, if you can feel it, somebody testify, testify. If you believe it, if you receive it, if you can feel it, somebody testify. If you got pain, he's a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom or saving, he's a prison shaking savior. If you got chains, he's a chain breaker. If you need freedom or saving, he's a prison shaking savior. If you got chains, he's a chain breaker. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Before we dismiss the children, I want to give you a chance to testify. The Word of God says that we overcome the enemy by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. When you say amen or you clap or you say yes, Lord, or even if Miss, I asked Miss Faye last week if I really got on it good for her to lean out and give me a thumbs up on, in Mr. Charlie's honor, um, what, if y'all want to give you a chance to stand up and testify about how good God's been to you, what he's brought you from, or what you're believing in faith, he's going to do as, you, as people hear what's happening in the lives of those that they go to church with, it stirs your faith. Is there anybody who wants to testify before we transition to Children's Church? Amen. Amen. That's wonderful, wonderful. Anybody else? Absolutely. Can somebody join me, please?
Well, um, Yeah, amen. I ain't got enough pride to say I ain't gonna struggle. I ain't struggling. Yeah, well, we're we're just we're honored that you trust us enough. And if you've ever struggled, I want you on your feet and I want you to come up here. I want you to pray for this family. Most of you know he's been out of work with this injury and he's supposed to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Father in Jesus' name. Open your mouths and pray with me, church. Father in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, Thank you, Lord, that you're a comforter. Thank you, Lord, that you're touching and moving on Jonathan's body right now, Father. His testimony to bring glory, praise, and honor into your name for Emily, Lord, and Elliot. Thank you, God, for helping them, for touching their family, for providing for them financially, emotionally, spiritually, and encouraging them, Father. We speak healing and blessing and moving upon their lives. Father, we thank you, God, for men and women of God who seek the face of the Lord and ask him to move mightily in their lives. Thank you, Father, for encouragement, for peace, Lord, that passes understanding, and for giving him the strength and the courage to press on through the precious blood and the work of the mighty Savior Jesus. Thank you, Lord. For men and women of God who seek your face, who, Father, who know they're struggling, but know, God, that you are a pain taker and you are a chain breaker and you're a deliverer. We speak deliverance, peace, grace, and mercy and blessing upon Jonathan, Emily, and Elliot, Father, for your glory and the authority of the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, for, thank you for asking. For anybody else? Anybody else? Wants to, Hope, come on up here. We testify and pray for each other. A lot of hope through here. Amen. Cheryl, come on up here, please. Y'all let Cheryl through on your right and my left, please. Oh, I'm, he, he fooled me. He's coming up the middle. Cheryl's mama is, um, is, uh, needs prayer, and Cheryl's helping take care of her. If you've helped raise your mama, you know, um, and Hope needs a touch of the Lord as well in her physical body, so I want you to call out. Cheryl and Hope Dale's name this morning. Stretch your hands this way, and let's pray for them. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you, Lord, for giving them wisdom. The word, Lord, the word of God says, if any man lack, let him ask for wisdom. And Holy Spirit, we pray for wisdom in this situation. God, in Jesus' name, give Cheryl and Hope wisdom as they minister to her mother. Father, as you touch and move upon Hope's physical body, thank you, God, for giving us the ability to rebuke pain in the authority of the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for the blood of Jesus that still works signs, wonders, and miracles. Fathers, you give them peace. You touch their mental health. You touch their marriage. You touch their finances. And you lead and guide their steps as they work together as a team to minister together as a family, Lord. And you touch them. You help them, Father, as you said you would provide. Thank you, God, that you're a provider. And we give you glory for providing right now, Lord, in the authority of the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Anybody else wants prayer this morning or wants to testify? Yes, Marcy. Oh, yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. Yeah, sure. So be with those people. Yes, absolutely. Okay, so Seth um, is a volunteer fireman and was called out to a terrible accident. So we're praying for the family that's pinned and also for Seth um, because we want him to come home safely as well. All right. So we're going to pray for Seth and the families represented. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, that we can stand in the gap. And thank you, God, for protecting and moving upon Seth, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for ministering to the families that are affected by this wreck, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, my God. Thank you, Lord. We just bless your name and thank you, God, for keeping him safe. 
for touching and moving upon the families, Lord, and for the wudu shakarabar, the hands and feet of Seth that carries the gospel at that roadside. That, Father, we thank you, Lord, for men and women of God who put themselves in harm's way to provide for us, Lord, and be responders for us. Thank you, Lord, as you bring him home safe and you touch and move upon the family that was affected by this accident. Lord, be with him and guide him, and thank you for it all, Father, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Anybody else want to pray or testify? Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Ma'am? Yes, ma'am. Come here. Come here. It's too much, too, too much people moving around. We can't, I can't even hear you. Come here. Come here. Tell it. Uh, a couple of months back, I had to go to the doctor, and he did a test on me and said that I had two nodules on my, on my thyroid. So um, he wanted me to go to Dunn to a, another specialist, and uh, as they were doing the test, they said, well, we don't see anything, you know, to merit having a, a biopsy on this thing. And so, <laughs> so, so then Thursday I had the, which I, I was praising right there, you know, I shook, throw my hand up and I thank the Lord, you know. And so then Thursday I had to go and get a, a follow-up, you know, and, the doctor, he, he looked at it, he says, I don't know what's going on here. He says, there was a, a doctor in Benson that says you had problems with uh, nodules on your thyroid. He said, and then I got another specialist here that says they can't find anything. <laughs> can't, can't find anything, you know, that Mary's doing a, a biopsy. And so he said, I've never had this to happen before. He said, I just don't know what's going on. I said, well, let me tell you. <laughs> uh, he's one, one of these guys from India, you know, they don't know if they believe in Mohammed or something or other, not, not the God that we do. <laughs> but, but anyway, uh, he turned around, he looked at me. I said, because there was, there, I know a God, I said it. I had prayers put up for me that today, be before I came here, that y'all wouldn't find anything. He said, well, it must have worked. <laughs> I said, I know it works. Amen. I was so tickled over that, I tell you, because I, I just knew when I went in there he wasn't going to find anything. He says, well, I, I'm I'm still not, uh, you know, completely satisfied. I said, well, I am. I said, if there's not <laughs> anything there, he said, well, I'd like for you to come back down here, you know, and have some more blood work so we we can put this in our records anyway. I said, well, I I really don't think it's necessary. <laughs> Let me tell you what Miss Ruth did to me. I couldn't. I'm gonna stand right here and embarrass you. I could not make it to that biopsy. And y'all know I try my teetotal best to be there when you go to the doctor or have something done. I try. Okay, I try. My phone rings and it's Miss Ruth. And she's crying. Brother Ken, Brother Ken, Brother Ken. What is it? What? What, Miss Ruth? What? And then she starts testifying. And on the inside I go, oh, praise the Lord. <laughs> praise the Lord. You know what? I don't know about y'all, but your mind automatically goes to the one stinking time I couldn't go. And that's exactly when she needed, wanted her pastor to be there. But, but you remember doing that to me? Okay, yeah, good. Because the life just drained out of my toes that day when she did that. But praise the Lord. Praise God for her testimony. Amen. Anybody else? Yes, sir. Turn around so they can hear you.
Uh, Tim wants prayer. Y'all get on your feet and join me. Amen. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you, Lord, for the authority to call upon health, well-being, happiness. Lord, to move in this situation, Lord, with his finances, you know he's trying to be a better steward of what you let him and Marcy Barra. We thank you, Lord, for t protecting them, touching them, being with them, leading and guiding them, Father, for giving him wisdom and favor and making his words sweet as honey, but also for the hungry soul that desires it. Thank you, Father, for giving him grace and peace and mercy to, to glorify and honor and praise the name of God, Father. Lord, as we forgive, our, forgive us of our sins, Lord, as we forgive those who sin against us, Lord. Thank you, Father, for salvation full and free and the ability to come before your throne and pray, God, that you you move. We thank you, Father. We can believe it. We can receive it. And we testify of it today that we are ready when you come, Lord, that we're good stewards and that we're good neighbors and we're good friends to each other, to the world, that we show the love of Christ and the light of Christ and salt and light for your glory and your praise. You answer his prayers and his heart's desire in Christ's name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Anybody else this morning? Amen. Amen. And when you go back to your seat, say, I'm glad to see you today. Good gracious, I'm glad to say it. Say it out loud. Say it out loud. Good gracious, I'm glad to see you today. Amen. Yeah. You may think, all oh, that ain't necessary. Well, that could have been the person that uh, no one had spoke to them or they hadn't had their hand shaked or their neck hugged. Um, the Word of God is powerful, sharper than a two-edged sword, and we believe that we can pray, anoint with oil, and those Christians that are in the church will pray, lay their hands on, and we'll, things will happen. Signs, wonders, and miracles will, and we don't dismiss our children to children's church until after that. Their children, your children are always welcome to stay in the sanctuary, even when we do have children's church, but we dismiss them. We don't dismiss them until afterwards because we want them to have a Pentecostal experience. In their church, and they understand what's going on. Miss Faye? Amen. Amen. Thank you all so much. Let me say it again. The family needs just as much support the day after the funeral as they do the, the, day, the day before the funeral. Maybe more. So please let me encourage you every time you think, and it doesn't have to be Mr. Charlie. It can be anyone in the church, anyone you know. You have a favorite memory, a favorite uh, uh, anecdote, uh, something that reminds you of them. Call them, text them, send them a message. Let them know that they live on forever in your memories. Um, Miss Faye just brought me four 12-pack of Diet Mountain Dews. Amen. <laughs> she said, I just got them for Charlie, and he didn't finish them, so I can't think of anybody else that would enjoy them any better than you. And I said, amen. So she brought them to the church, so I didn't have to carry them home. Amen. Anybody else this morning? Amen. Chance to testify. We'll be prayed for. Winnie, and then you, Jeremy.
Jeremy? And just in case y'all don't know, that there's such a thing as preacher counting. Y'all ever heard of preacher counting? Every time, when I ask Jeremy or Miss, those who know, after service, I mean we have today, it's, it's like he said 73. I said, oh, no, we have more than that. <laughs> we have more than that, yeah. Uh, anybody else this morning? Who, yes, Kimberly. You can get great preaching at home. There are preachers who can preach the paint off the wall. You can get great praise and worship 24 hours a day. So you don't come just for the preaching and for the praise and worship. You come because they cannot offer you community. Furtick ain't going to do your funeral. T.D. Jakes ain't going to do your wedding. Joel Osteen ain't going to come to your birthday party. Miss Kathy, be pretty now. Miss Kathy mumbles something. I'm going to just let y'all wait to get to heaven, <laughs> heaven to watch the DVD to hear it. But, <laughs> but it won't be about, it won't be about me. But you can't get community and people who know you, pray about you, and call you and check on you if you don't have a community of believers. So find a church. Get Listen, now this is a pregnant statement. Get planted and rooted in it. Don't show up 10 minutes after handshakes and leave when I'm praying and say nobody spoke to me. (laughs) 
Don't come to church and say, what can the church do for me? Anybody else want to testify before I release the children? Psalms 127, verses 3 through 5 says, Children are heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. Like the arrows in the hands of the warrior, so are the children of one's youth. Happy is a man who has a scriver full of them. Our children are going to children's church. Amen. Praise the Lord. If you have your Bibles, and I hope you do, we're going to be in between Revelations 14. Welcome, 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 welcome. Good job. That's okay. That ain't that. All right, wonderful. Um, we're going to be picking up at the end of Revelations 14 and beginning Revelations 15. Um, last week we stopped talking about uh, Revelations 14 references heaven and references hell. And um, the where I stopped uh, last week was it costs you something to serve God. Anything worth, ha- first l- l- let, me, let me stop and say for the record, I'm thankful for a church that helps us take care of our children. I'm in the pulpit, Miss Winnie's on the piano, and we still need somebody that, that knows how to play piano that can help fill in when she's like in the back with Sandy or for an altar call. But um, right then, Sandy Kay tried to get away and somebody jumped up to help her because she's, when she's on a mission, y'all ever seen her on a mission before? When she's on a mission, she, she, she might not say it out loud, but she knows what's going on. She knows what she's thinking. Um, thank you so much for being a church that helps us look out for her and don't let her get out the building and you know she's supposed to be around one of us. Um, Revelations 14, um, where I stopped was it costs you something to serve God. And we don't like to pay for stuff. We like free. I, I joke about it all the time, but I have a few sayings like, if it's free, it's me. Or if it's free, get three. Right? But how many of y'all know salvation is free, but it wasn't cheap? And it will cost, you are going to, how many of you ever heard this growing up? You're going to pay the piper one day. Right? So you're going to pay now or you're going to pay later, but guess what you're going to do? You're going to pay. Who are you going to pay? Are you going to pay the enemy of your soul or are you going to pay the price to serve your, the God of the universe? Uh, someone posted this last week, I think it was, um, but it said if you, the, the, the sun is billions of, of miles away and you can't stare at it for any amount of time without, you can suffer complete long-term eye damage if you stare at a sun that's billions of miles away. If you say that you've submitted and served the God who made that, there needs to be a different scene in you. What is coming about from the cost you're paying? The, Paul says you have to take up your cross daily. And you know what the problem with crucify? and it says to crucify the flesh. You know what the problem with crucifying the flesh is? Is you might be able to nail w- your feet down and you might be able to nail one hand down, but you need somebody to help you nail the other hand down. That's why your church family is so important. I've, I've met Christians who don't go to church ever. It's easy to be a Christian when you don't go to church. Well, Ken, I can, worship, I can worship God at the beach on Sunday morning. You sure can. You can worship God hunting. You can worship God running dogs. You can worship God sleeping. You can worship God washing your car. But you cannot fulfill your, and you should take time off, and sometimes you will miss church. So I ain't saying you have to be here every time the doors are open. But you can never fulfill your destiny as a Christian if you're not a regular, attending, participating part of a church family. 
your destiny. One day if the Lord will let me, Chris, one day if the Lord will let me, I'm going to have a 66 Mustang. And when I get it, I'm not putting, I, right now I have Gas Buddy. Anybody have Gas Buddy? You look for the cheapest price on gas. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I can help you download the app. It's free. It tells you where the cheapest gas in town is. Let me tell you something, Tim. When I get that 66 Mustang, I'm putting the real stuff in it with no ethanol. There's not going to be any corn liquor in my tank. Just in case y'all don't know, ethanol is just corn liquor, okay? Now, please don't try to boil a gasoline and get the liquor out of it. But I'm not putting, I'm putting the real stuff, the non-ethanol stuff in there. And I'm not going to crank it. And sit in the garage, because it ain't going to be parked outside, and sit in the garage and just go, well, that was fun. I'm going in the house. Now, that is fun. But that's not the destiny of that car. The destiny of the car is to pull out there and not, get, not worry about miles per gallon, but smiles per gallon. Right? You have a destiny in Christ. Do you just sit in the garage and go, oh, that was fun, I'm going home? Or are you paying the price to take the destiny God's laid on your heart? It pays to serve God, but the pay dramatically outweighs the cost in the end. It costs a little bit now, but the benefits are so much larger. It pays to serve God. The last part of Revelation chapter 14 comes up with a quote, uh, excuse me, a phrase and says, and I looked and behold, um, which is a, a sneak peek of the Battle of Armageddon. The Battle of Armageddon will take place in a valley in Israel called Medigo. That's about 4,500 square miles, uh, 4,500 miles square. And after the Antichrist breaks his treaty with Israel during the tribulation, the last three and a half years of the tribulation after the rapture, he will gather an army of over 200 million in that valley preparing to destroy Jerusalem. Just in case y'all don't know, the enemies always tried to destroy the Jews. And if you're, some of you are old enough to remember, this, was it the seven-day war, the ten-day war? Yeah, when, when Israel became a nation and they tried to defeat that, that did not last very long either. Supernaturally, God intervened, but there will strive to be one more huge battle. And Jesus, at the last minute, will step in, coming on the clouds with a sickle and a gold crown. And that's something I want to see. I've been, maybe I can watch it from heaven. The first time he came, he came as a helpless baby and as a victim. But he is coming again, and he is the victorious king. There's no one above him. There's no one close to him. There's no other gods like him. That's why he has the capital G. The first time he came, he was crucified. The second time he comes, he will be coronated. The first time he came, will he was uh, marked for death. This time, men will bow to him. The first time he came, he bowed and washed Judas's feet. The second time he comes, he's going to be, men, men will bow before him. The first time he came, he came to free me from the penalty of sin, but now he comes to free man from the power of sin. A battle so huge and lasts and gets, and it's, it happens so quickly that we will read in a moment how the blood will run from a town called Dan to another town called Beersheba, which is around 200 miles apart. From our church to 701 is five miles. And the Bible says for 200 miles, the battle will be so intense, the blood will run as high as horses' bridles for 200 miles. When Ezekiel prophesied in chapter 39, it would take seven years to get rid of the weapons and seven months to bury the dead. That's the battle that's coming. Now we're moving to Revelation 15. In Revelation 15, let's pick up in verse 1. Then I saw another sign, great sign in heaven, another sign in heaven, great and marvelous. Seven angels who had seven plagues, which are the last, because in them the wrath of God is finished. And I saw something like a sea of glass mixed with fire. And those who had been victorious over the beast in his image and the number of his name, standing upon the sea of glass, holding harps of God. And they sang the song of Moses, the bondservant of God. Now, let me take you back in biblical history a minute. When they crossed the Red Sea, just in case y'all don't know this, you need to be reading your Bible, they sang a song of praise to God, and they also sang a song to Moses. Now, what is that song? I don't know. 
But all the way back in Exodus, it came up, and we see it here. They sang the song of Moses, the bondservant of God, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are your works, O Lord. The Almighty, righteous and true are your ways, King of the nations. Verse 4. Who will not fear, O Lord, and glorify your name? For you alone are holy. For all the nations will come and worship before you, for your righteous acts have been revealed. After these things I looked, and the temple and the tabernacle of testimony in heaven was opened. The tabernacle of testimony. And the seven angels, who had the seven plagues, came out of the temple, clothed in linen, clean and bright, and girded around their chests with golden sashes. Then one of the four living creatures gave the seven angels seven golden bowls full of the wrath of God who lives forever and ever. And the temple was filled with smoke from the glory of God and from his power. And no one was able to enter the temple until the seven plagues of the seven angels were finished. So, let's talk about some of the details of Revelation chapter 15. Listen, here's some of the most important things you need to know. All throughout the Bible, it says God is holy. There is none like him. There is none below him. Everything else is below him. He is omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscient, and he is God. Now, we generally like to try to find the best in people, most of us. And most people do not intentionally Sometimes they do because things like greed and lust and power are intoxicating and will blind people and it can make people be ugly and do things or hunger will make people do things that they would never ever normally do. But there is no one perfect except God. And no matter how, so, so watch this, as the 2024 election cycle begins, Let me go ahead and and be a spoiler alert for everybody. Whoever you choose is not going to be perfect. Please stop treating, and I don't care who you're voting for. Well, actually I do, but I'm not going to tell you. Um, I don't care if they're Republican, Democrat, Independent, Green Party, whatever. They are not perfect. And don't be surprised when dirt comes up on them because you got, how about if we put your dirt on the screen today? Anybody here perfect? Just please don't give Christ-like status to man or woman. Right? Because there is only one good, and that is God. Right? And we find out in Revelation 15 that he is who he says he is and does what he says he's going to do. Revelation 15 gives us more intimate details about heaven and talks about the end of the great tribulation and details of the last plague that's about to be poured out. We see a picture of saints singing songs. The two specific songs, as I mentioned earlier, the Song of Moses and the Song of the Lamb. The Song of Moses was sang at the Red Sea. What's really interesting about the Song of Moses is the Bible says that not only were the Hebrew people baptized in water, they were baptized into Moses. Which means he is a he's not perfect because how many of y'all know, I'm sure none of you have a problem with anger. But Moses didn't get kicked out of uh, the promised land for smoking cigarettes. He got kicked out of heaven because uh, out of the promised land because of his anger. Because he was aggravated with the mo- one of the most aggravating churches has ever been. He pastored a church of eighty for eighty years of some of the most aggravating people in the world. Complained about everything. Every morning, y'all read your Bible. Moses pastored those people. Every morning, the the best we can come up with is every morning they had honey buns to eat. You read your Bible, manna, manna. Uh, The Hebrew word means what is this, but the best description is like a honey bun. They had honey buns every morning. And after a while, they wanted some some more groceries. So instead of asking God, they started complaining. Do you know it's okay to ask a question, but it, it borderlines sinful to complain and murmur at church? And they complained so much, God said, I'm going to send you so much meat, you're going to gag on it. Because how many of y'all know, whatever your favorite meal is, if you eat it enough times, eventually it tastes like soap. 
right? Right? He sent quail so deep and so thick they couldn't eat all of it. They complained, complained, tried to relieve uprisings. They said things like, Oh, in Egypt, we had all the garlic and herbs and onions and leeks. We had everything we wanted in Egypt. And just like us, we remember the good stuff and forget the bad stuff God brought us out of. The Bible says they sang the song of Moses and they sang the song of the Lamb. The la song of the Lamb is, will be sang at the crystal sea before the temple in heaven. The song of Moses details, although we don't know what the words are, but the song of Moses will detail how God brought them out. The song of the Lamb will entail how God brings his people up. In the song of Moses and the, is the first song recorded in the Bible being sang. The song of the Lamb is the last song recorded being sang. In Moses, we see the mighty hand of God against the strongest nation that ever existed. In the song of the Lamb, we see the mercy of God in Moses, who with justice and the Lamb with justification. The song of Moses is the song of redemption. After they cross the Red Sea on dry ground and the Egyptian army is destroyed, Moses is a deliverer through the Red Sea, symbolizing the blood with the Pharaoh as an Antichrist symbol. When you pay attention, anybody ever said something like this? I, I really, I didn't, I won't pay any attention and this happened, right? If you're honest, if you're honest, a lot of times what happens is just because you're not paying attention. You are, you're somewhere else, but when you pay attention, you'll see that Moses is a type of Christ who leads them out of the sin of Egypt and through the blood of the Red Sea and delivers them on the other side. Do you think it's a coincidence that the first song and the last song in the book of Revelation that's mentioned is the song of Moses and the song of the Lamb? There are no coincidences with God. There are no coincidences with God. There's no child born God didn't know about was going to happen. Has it ever occurred to you nothing has ever occurred to God? Have you ever had a, oh, good gracious, I just realized that moment. That's never happened to God. Nothing's ever, nothing's ever caught God by surprise. God's always paying attention. God is always paying attention. Nothing's faster, nothing's smarter, nothing's higher. The song of Moses and the song of the Lamb, a type and a shadow. Just as Moses led his people out of Egypt into the promised land, Jesus is going to lead all the saints out of earth into heaven. Listen, let me tell you something. I don't mean this ugly. I, I, for example, I love the Happy Goodmans. Anybody know who the Happy Goodmans are? I love the Happy Goodmans. I love the Happy Goodmans. But, and, and I don't think their songs are, 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 are the song, some songs I'm getting ready to mention, I don't think they're unbiblical. I just think you need to take them with a grain of salt, okay? Quit singing songs about I'm living, that, that heaven is Canaan. Because heaven ain't Canaan. Okay, Canaan had fortified walls and cities and giants. Heaven is not Canaan. It may be the land of milk and honey. Canaan is the land you live in now as a Christian, where you can fight the battles that are before you with the promise of God behind you. Heaven is not Canaan. There will be no giants to defeat in heaven. There will be no war in heaven. There will be no walled cities that we got to walk around and shout at Jericho. Heaven is not Canaan. So I like the song. I sing a bunch of songs like that. But just understand, heaven is not Canaan. You're living in Canaan now if you're a believer. If you're living in sin, you're living in Egypt. Where you're living to the bondage of sin. Canaan is not heaven. And the saints will be led at, like Jesus through the blood into heaven. They will sing the magnificent victory of our God. We see a temple filled with smoke, and, the Bi and in the Bible, smoke is symbolic of judgment and wrath. The fire of God's wrath is burning against the sins of humanity in the Old Testament. When the priest would offer the animal sacrifice, his fire would fall from heaven and consume it. The song of Moses and the song of the Lamb, there's an incredible amount of stuff going on, and everything in the Old, listen, everything in the Old Testament is there for a reason. And it is tied to everything in the New Testament. Jesus Christ, somebody messaged me two weeks ago and asked me, 
who was the one, it says the Lord showed up at Abraham's tent the day he told Abraham, this time next year, your, was, she, was she 90 and, and Abraham was 100 or 99 and 89, something like that? So she was not, yeah, Bible scholar, y'all help me out. Um, this time next year, you'll have a child. And Sarah, because of the day and the time as they lived, Sarah was not allowed to be in the tent with the men. And Sarah heard it and laughed. And the, the Lord, so this is a Christophany where Jesus Christ shows up in the Old, Old Testament. Jesus said, I heard that. And Sarah, so she's in another tent. They're not looking at each other. He said, I heard that. She said, what are you talking about? This is a KWV, okay, the Ken White version. She said, I heard, he said, I heard that. She said, what are you talking about? He said, I heard you laugh. And I'm going to make you laugh as long as you live because this time next year you're going to have a son and you're going to name him Isaac and his name means laughter. Jesus Christ showed up in the Old Testament. He just doesn't show up as Jesus, the name Jesus. Um, the fourth man in the fire. There's other Christophanies where Jesus Christ shows up. When he wrestled with Jacob and popped his head hip out of joint, Jesus shows up. And when you pay attention to what's happening in the Old Testament, you will see it tied to the New Testament. Do you know how many references there are to each other? And it is, it is a perfect book. Now, it has, been, it has been manipulated by humanity before. But as Brother Tim said, it will be very wise... For you to have a hard copy of one of these. And I'd also encourage you to get a Hebrew Greek study word Bible concordance to find out what these words mean in Greek. Let me give you one example and then I'll close because I started chasing a rabbit. And I think I just saw a kangaroo, but we're going to come back to Sampson County in just a minute, okay? Isaiah 7.14 says, Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bring forth a son, and he shall call his name Emmanuel. Okay, most of your versions say that. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Emmanuel. Some newer versions of the Bible, your NASB, your NIVs, your um, they will say, "Behold, a maiden shall bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Emmanuel." If you don't know what that word means in Hebrew. You will not know that the word virgin and maiden are synonyms. Everybody knows what a synonym is? That's probably your favorite flavor on toast. I'm not, that's cinnamon. I'm talking about a synonym. A synonym means it means the same thing. But here's why I draw the line, the distinction. Maidens give birth every day all over the world. Virgins don't. 4,500 years ago, approximately, when that Isaiah was written, the word maiden was synonymous, synonym, with the word virgin. In 2023, when the average man or woman reads that verse and says, Behold, a maiden shall bring forth a son, and he shall call his name Emmanuel, they go, so any girl? No, not just any girl. That's why I encourage you to have a Hebrew-Greek concordance so you find out what these words mean. Because how many of y'all know words change meanings over the years, right? Words change meanings over the years. And what one word used to mean does not mean that anymore. So as Brother Tim said, it would be very wise to have a hard copy of one of these and a Hebrew-Greek concordance. And most, the most popular one is called Strong's. Uh, concordance, and if you don't know how to get one, come see me, and I'll help you find one, and you can just pay me, okay? But the Word of God is true, and it is being changed electronically. Hmm? And one day, before the end of days, whenever Armageddon is, this will be illegal. Ken, we'll never burn books again. We have always burned books. And don't say it won't happen again. People have a subconscious taste for truth, but we do not like the way it tastes. Stand with me. Bow your heads and let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord, that the word of God is true. Thank you, Father, for helping us today and leading and guiding us, Lord. Father, in Jesus' name, if there's someone here today that doesn't know Christ and they'd like to come forward and receive him, I'd love to meet you here at the front. 
and pray with you the prayer of faith before we go today. Is there anyone here? And then, Lord, I praise you and thank you for the testimony and the songs of your people and believe you, Father, to answer our prayers. Bring us back the next appointed time and use us to bring you glory, praise, and honor in Christ's name. Amen. Shake hands with two or three people. We'll see you tonight at Sunday Gunday.